Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a serum tip and trick tutorial video for ADSR. In this video, we're going to be looking at just general tips and tricks to get better growls and better basses that are very rich with kind of the harmonics of the wavetable and how to modulate through those wavetables to get really complex tones. So these types of sounds are very popular in dubstep, trap, a lot of those more of aggressive type genres. So I have two instances of serum pulled up. And everything is the exact same in both of these patches, except for I've turned off all the modulation in one of them. And you're really going to see and hear how different and how much these modulation destinations affect the sound. So here's the first one. Okay, now here's the second one. Same preset, just modulation destinations have been, the, uh, the all the mods are turned off. Okay, so that's night and day. The reason I decided to do this tutorial was I've gotten a couple comments and emails through the ADSR network asking how do you do better growls, better type of dubstep basses, trap basses, like, like maybe like Jack U, Skrillex, Diplo, anything that's really bass heavy. Okay, so the, the thing that's making this sound is literally just the modulation. And the modulation destinations are plentiful. <laughs> They're happening, there's LFO3 is occurring on 11 different parameters within the synth. LFO2 is 2, LFO1 is 2. So there's 15. Uh, so there's a lot going on with this sound. Now we're going to look at just general tips and tricks in this video to get better growls, better complex basses like this, or even leads depending if you're doing maybe like a trap song. But we're going to look at just tips and tricks to get better tones where, where you don't have to do as many effects and where you're just getting a better, cleaner sound from the get-go. Now, this is admittedly more of a beginner to intermediate tutorial if you guys are more advanced users. I uh, just wanted to kind of lay that out there, preface it so you don't watch the whole video if, you're, if, if you feel like you know this stuff. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, the first thing we want to actually address are the wavetables. Now that's where the sound's going to be generated from. So if we go to the sound from Serum that doesn't have any of the modulation, it still sounds like a vocal sound right now, but it doesn't have that big bass sound. Now there's something you, you want to be very aware of when you're looking at your, or trying to find a wavetable to create this type of sound in Serum. You want to find wavetables that either don't have any space in between the different wavetable positions or the cycles, or they have this kind of like grayed out skin stretchy area, right? Like, so here's the first wave. This isn't actually a cycle. Now the space in between this wave right here and the one that the position's basically on right now is being created from Serum's algorithm inside the wavetable editor. If we go to this, there are only four individual waves, but they've been crossfaded either via spectral crossfade or morph or one of these different tools here to kind of create a smoothing effect between them. Because if it didn't have that, when you modulate through these different positions or cycles with an LFO, which you need to do for those big bass growl type sounds, it's going to sound awful. It's going to be a hard change, a hard stop from, wa from wavetable cycle A to wavetable cycle B. So there are wavetable positions, like if we, we'll copy this right now. Okay, we'll copy this preset and let's initialize. So we will initialize. All right, so this, this instance is uh, just one cycle. So if you move through, nothing will happen. So that's very bad for a growl type sound. But let's look at a, uh, if we go to the analog, wavetables do basic shapes. Do you see that this space is there? And it's, there's actually space. There's a lot of gray clear space. Well, if we go back to, uh, let's go to a wavetable that doesn't have that. We'll go to... Um, Okay, so see here, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it looks like there's eight actual snapshots or cycles that were created. And then the algorithm is creating this kind of, do you see it's kind of this hazy grayed out area. It's not like there's just a hole in it. So if we look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I was right. You can actually see this by looking, which is why it's so nice that Serum such a visual synth. So if I move through the wavetail position, it's literally going to change from a saw, uh, sorry, a sine wave to a saw to a triangle. So let's listen to this. Okay, so if we stuck like an LFO on here and we did, let's do uh, save to shape for this tutorial, and we stuck this baby on right here. You're never going to get a growl tone from that. 
or even really anything musical because it's just blending from, it's going straight from a sine to a saw to a triangle. Now let's look at the inverse of that. So this one is kind of a weird shape altogether and it morphs into a sine wave. A buzzy sine. So if we stuck this on here and moved through these wave tail positions, do you see and hear how it's hitting in between, it's starting out at this first wave tilt position. It's going all the way up to about that second one, that's that that sinusoidal wave. And but it's hitting the sound via the spectral or the morph crossfade in the wavetable editor, and it's actually giving it that it's giving sound, giving cycles to move through. So there are two things to be cognizant of when you're going for these big bass sounds. The first is the actual wavetable. You want to make sure that there's no holes in the wavetable cycles and you can modulate through them using the wavetail position with an LFO. If, there, if, if you want to use a wavetable like this for some reason, there is a workaround, but I would suggest just finding a little bit of a better wavetable. But you can go to your wavetable editor. You can click Shift-click on all of the different cycles, and you can go to Morph, and we'll just do Crossfade. So now when we move through these, do you see that this isn't as grayed out? There's that little kind of light skin, fleshy colored looking stretch section to it. So now when we move through this, it's going to be more of a subtle change. It's not going to be a hard stop from shape to shape. So now if I play this. So that's working. Now that before was would probably just fall into dead space. So it would just stay on a triangle wave or a saw wave or a sine wave. Or you could just always find a wavetable that you want to actually use for the sound. So let's go back to the sound now that we are working with. Okay, so we're going to go to the LFO3. And this is just kind of a general growl shape. And I have it set to an envelope. So it's not going to be an LFO. It's not going to go wub, wub, wub. It's going to trigger. Now, if I wanted it to be a wub, wub, wub sound, I would just hit, I would uncheck envelope or hit off. And then it would continue to cycle through. Let's do an envelope here so it's like an envelope. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add this to the level of oscillator A. We're going to add this to the wavetail position. So you can see it's moving through. And we can add it to the detune a little bit. A little bit of FM. Okay, so there is that. Now we have four destinations on LFO3. Let's apply a little bit of LFO3 to the filter now. So let's drag this on to the cutoff. And I'm just doing this to taste. Uh, it can be any filter. It can be anything. I'm just showing you this general workflow. Let's do uh, frequency. Let's push that out a little bit. Okay, and then another one that's really fun to do with the uh, certain with the filters that have the option is throw it on the pan and option and click. So it's both a uh, it's going to left and right. So it's it's bi-directional here. It's going two directions. <laughs> Okay. Now we can even apply this same one to, let's apply a little bit to the wavetail position in oscillator B. All right, so now we have 10 destinations set up on LFO3. Let's look at LFO1 and 2 and see if we can't create even more movement through these oscillators. So I'm going to go to LFO1, and let's just pop this one on oscillator B on the wavetail position. That sounds kind of cool. And We'll put it on the A sim. All right, let's go back to, os to LFO3. And let's put this on the phase here. So it, it changes the phase trigger with the LFO. All right, let's go to LFO2 and we'll pop that on the drive. Okay, you can see how, or in here, how just doing these different LFOs and moving through the proper type of wavetable in your oscillator, you can get those big growl type sound. I also want to put LFO3 on the sub. 
just to add some more low end, but you can see how this is all playing together. We can even do LFO2, do like a coarse pitch on it. All right, and you can hear, it. you got a nice, cool, dope type of sound right now. It's really big, it's gnarly. And all we did was just modulate the heck out of the proper wavetable. That's how it's, we'll bypass all the destinations right now to A, B this. So here's back to normal. Okay, so the, the difference is night and day if you use the proper type of wavetable. And I personally like to blend a really digital sounding uh, wavetable with more of maybe not an analog leaning, but more of one that doesn't have as much grit or dirt to it. See all the different, uh, see how rigid and kind of pointy this is at all points? That means it's a lot of noise. It's gonna be gritty, it's gonna be rough. These are a little bit smoother shapes for the most part on this second oscillator. It's not as noisy. There you guys go. There are some tips and tricks on how to get better growl sounds from Serum. If you follow this type of, or this method, you should get really cool results almost every time. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.